Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, this is Crazy Sugoi, and I'm recording this video on Sunday, October 31st. It's now the end of the uh, October tournament, and happy Halloween, everyone. And I've got a good one for you guys today. In this video, I'm going to be showing you the 2021 layout tips and tricks that I've got for our new players and our intermediate players. I'm going to speak about where we should place our armor blocks, what room should be um, positioned relative to other rooms if you're going with the telespam strategy. And going forward, I think for the most part, I'm strictly going to be speaking about telespam because I don't know much about gunships anyway. I've been telespam for as long as I can remember, and if telespam ever becomes an obsolete tactic, then I'm pretty sure I'm quitting the game. But that said, let's take a look at the tournament reward real quick. So we see here uh, I've received uh, a skin, uh, 1,000 bucks and 100 doves here. I can go ahead and hit dismiss there. And if I go up here to my um, bank, uh, we'll see that I've got 175 bucks. And ideally, I don't want to get the chest because I get such horrible rolls. Um, I'm going to see if I can get another energy barrier, which I know I can't, but I just like to try. And there we go. Maximum number of that item has been received. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and get a sprinkler if I can. Let's see. That's perfect. I'm still allowed to get sprinklers. And I'm just five, um, five doves short of getting another sprinkler. So I'll see what happens um, next tournament. And as for this season reward for the cosmetic here we go it's a dynamic android studio kit uh, retrofit your android studio for a bot dynamics factory look requires max level android studio and i'm thinking they haven't fixed some sort of bug because this isn't the one that we should be getting um it should be a different skin but that said let's just get right into the video and um, I can take a look at uh, 2021 tips and tricks for layouts, um, general ideas, and just the primary for telespam layout. Now, I was going to remove all the rooms off of my ship, but without a um, custom mode or a build mode where I can easily place things down and from inside my bag and back onto the ship it would be a really tedious task so instead I removed all my crew just so you guys can have a better look at what my ship looks like um, stripped of crew so first I'd um, suppose I'd like to speak from um, the right to the left or I'll just get a flow going and you guys can tell me or rather you guys can make sense of it as I go through so for the first part you'll notice that I have 25 crew slots um, which is um, five of these are from the original beds that everyone gets uh, for free and the rest of them are premium beds that you would have to purchase bedrooms rather that you have to purchase with in-game currency known as bucks so uh, i've been playing for quite a while i actually have all these crew rooms here i'll show you my beds level five um, we've got the oven room here which allows one additional crew i've got my captain's quarters which i have my captain in right now say hello captain and I've got the aquarium, the only uh, upgradable bedroom, which upgrades to level two to allow you to have access to two additional crew. Um, following that, let me uh, tab over. I have my graveyard. I have my car garage. I have my cryopod, my cat room, my um, Xmas room, and the dog house, which I recently uh, purchased, which is one of the costly purchases that I've ever made in this game but I figured you know it's been two years it looks like I'm not gonna be leaving this game let me let me get 25 crew um, so treated myself to the doghouse all right that said bedrooms are rooms that do not need any type of armor plating and they are as you can see not armored because that's just um, unnecessary so starting from uh, my teleport room here uh, typically let me first speak to armor and how armor works. So in this game, Pixel Starships, we have what are known as armor blocks. Now, armor blocks provide defense 
or additional defense for the rooms that they are adjacent to, that they are in contact with, immediate contact. So here we see I've got a max level um, 13 uh, armor block. Defense is uh, 17 here, and this is what a typical player's armor block will look like. Mine looks like a dragon scale because of an aesthetic. Um, so looking here, reduces system damage of adjacent rooms. So in contact with my teleport room presently, which is a uh, 2 by 3 um, space, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 armor blocks in contact with my teleport room. Meaning that if my teleport room comes under immediate fire, I'll be um, protected uh, or there'll be reduced damage going to my ship HP, which is at a max of 34 here in the top left, um, based off the contact of the armor blocks that are touching that. Now, your shield room is a room that you're going to want to have an ideal number of about 6, anywhere between really 5 and 7 armor blocks touching your shield room if you can. Here we I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 armor blocks in contact with this shield room here for uh, maximum protection. My 2x2 um, two two shield barrier room is in contact with four armor blocks uh ideally you're gonna want four anywhere between four and five armor blocks touching your shield barrier room as for the engine room um these rooms can be depending on what you use them for these can be um on the lower armored side but I have them um, six armor blocks each, but um, a safe number of armor blocks for the typical ship running an engine room can be anywhere between three and four armor blocks. Again, I have my other engine room here with a total of one, two, three, four, five, and six armor blocks in contact with it. Now we move on to our weapon rooms. I have my laser room here. My laser room, or uh, what's this referred to? Plasma Discharger has one, two, three, and four standard armor blocks touching it, and a special armor block which is purchased with premium currency in the shop. Uh, these are our small beacons, which is what it'll look like for um, the typical player here. These cost 50 bucks each in the shop, and they provide a lower defense at only five. But at the same time, that's still a good amount. And because of the aesthetic here, they have a little um, prettier look to them and they shine a bit. So I have, let's say, I'll still say five. I'll still say five armor blocks touching my uh, plasma discharger. But for the most part, you're going to want about four. And we're between, um, that's a good number, three and five armor blocks touching any one um, laser room. Uh, before I pass the elevator or the lifts area of the ship, I'm just going to toggle back to the right here and speak to the ion cannon. Now, my ion cannon has, if you can see here, one, two, three, four, five, and six um, bars of HP. It's not a room that typically gets focus fired very often, but at the same time, I still have three armor blocks in contact with that ion cannon. Now, an ion cannon can even go unarmored, but you're leaving yourself open to a lot of damage there uh, with a tactic like that. So you're going to want about two armor blocks touching the ion cannon if you can muster. Now, here I have some 1 HP rooms, a 2 HP room, and 1 HP reactors. Now, there's just almost no way to really defend... Uh, having a one a one HP room on your ship, it's gonna be easy picking. Anyway, you cut the you slice this cake. But for me, I have some modules, the highest level module or second to highest level module you can have in these in these one HP rooms, which gives it an additional five uh, HP with this steel barrier here. So. This is the equivalent of this room having about 6 HP blocks. And for these power capacitors, they're 1 HP rooms that cannot have any types of modules inside of them. So unfortunately, these are going to be major liabilities 
Um, but the the gains that it gives is just I cannot not have these on my ship because I need the extra power. So you can go to extreme lengths to protect these one HP rooms by having them equipped with modules, and you can look into modules um, on your own or do a quick Google search or <laughs> ask a fleet mate, and they'll uh, go into a bit of detail on that. But basically, modules add extra statistics to the room that they are in. Here we have an energy barrier, which is purchased only with doves. And you saw I tried to purchase one earlier. These are the highest HP model module rather that a ship can have. They are plus six HP. And there's really no reason for me to have this in my ion room. I just kind of threw it in there just because. So back to the armor block theory. Here, my uh, <laughs> my photon phaser is um, only protected by two armor blocks because that's all I can muster for that photon phaser while I'm focusing on defending the rest of the ship. Now, for rooms that can't be armored to the ideal uh, amount that you want, you're going to need some good repair AI, but that's a whole other video right there. So, unfortunately, this room can only have two armor blocks touching it right now for, uh, uh, I think this is low defense. Uh, ideally for a 2 HP room, you're going to want uh, four armor, black, armor blocks touching that, anywhere between uh, three and four. So here for my 1 HP uh, bolter, I actually have three armor blocks touching it just because the layout of my ship um, is this is just how efficient it could be. Any layout of any ship is not going to be 100% well rounded there's always going to be a little bit of a weak spot that you have to cover with some ai as for this one hp bolter it's ideally protected by four armor blocks in contact with that for my power capacitors these are um two square rooms so they can only really realistically at least have about two a maximum of two armor blocks touching them um that that aesthetically uh, and feasibly works some people bring an armor block down like this um, but for me that takes up valuable horizontal space and I do not recommend it at least not with this type of build that I'm running so for the reactor rooms in the past reactor rooms used to go unarmored but uh, for something that is now a little obsolete, which is the pen spam tactic, uh, you can ask your fleet, mate, fleet mates about that one, the more veteran players. Uh, there used to be a type of missile, or there still is a type of missile that once it hits a room, it immediately subtracts from your HP bar and it bypasses shields. So what most people using that tactic would do is just immediately fire those um, types of missiles at the reactor rooms because reactors would, uh, about 80% of the time, maybe 85, reactors were unarmored and it would just allow for easy HP depletion. So with that in mind, and also just with the new meta, um, or new metas as they developed, people started to armor their reactors and here you can see my fusion reactor has a total of um one two three four five and six armor blocks touching it which is uh, extremely excessive for a room of this um high hp magnitude especially considering it's also a reactor but this is just something that has happened in this particular layout of mine ideally you want three armor blocks touching a standard reactor and anywhere between uh two and three uh maybe a sparkly one as well um touching your fusion reactor here i have another two hp reactor room only touched by two armor blocks which is not ideal ideally i would like three or four on that but with the layout of the ship some things are going to have some shortcomings continuing on i have my zongzi factory which is a droid room here, which has only two armor blocks touching it. Again, ideally, I would like to have four armor blocks on that, but we have to sacrifice something somewhere along the line. So moving over to the uh, midsection of my ship, uh, let me see if I can start from the top here and work my way down. I have my hangar room, which isn't a room that's highly focus fired uh, in this um, current meta. But I, you can see I have three standard armor blocks touching it with the gilded block touching it as well for a total of four or really 
got a three and a half, which is a good number you want to have in a hangar room. As for the um, plasma discharge, I have one, two, three, and a gilded here, similar to one, two, three, and a gilded with the addition of this armor block, which is providing defense for both the hangar and both the plasma discharger. Moving on to my um, laser blaster, I have uh, three standard armor blocks and one gilded armor block uh, in contact with that. Um, you can see a repetitive pattern here with laser rooms. They're having three armor blocks um, primarily, so you can see that that's a pretty standard amount to have. You don't, you never want to over armor a room, or you never want to under armor it, if um, that makes sense to you. Continuing, I have my cloak generator here on my ship, which is um, going through the standard three armor block just because of its positioning. And I put an additional gilded armor block here. Uh, this room could easily be swapped out with a uh, missile room or another laser, um, which would work just fine. That amount of armoring is just perfect for that. I could also have a, um, where are my missile rooms? A missile room. Um, plugged into this location as well and Continuing down into the left. I have my EMP cannon Which is a whopping 5 HP room and because of positioning we could only muster to have a single armor block Touching that room, but ideally you would want two to three armor blocks on your EMP cannon um, Continuing on I have my ghost factory another droid room that is in contact with four armor blocks, the ideal number for a 2 HP room. This reactor here is in contact with a total of six armor blocks. Again, this layout is really um, in defense of pen spammers, as they are referred to. And also, it's just um, an optimal layout that I have found for my purposes. And let me see if I can just go ahead and remove this. Uh-oh, that's not good. It's going to have me... Reload this screen. Stand by, guys. Quick transition. Welcome back from the transition there, guys. Sorry about that. Let's continue. I was going to put my um, new sprinkler I bought into my reactor room, but it's giving me a technical issue, so I'm going to leave that for later. Here, uh, continuing on with the video, I believe I was at my reactor room. We have a total of six armor blocks in contact with that. And here in the middle section, I have my anti-air rooms which come under focus fire a lot in the gunship meta. So ideally, four armor blocks is what you want to have. Uh, with addition to that, I also have a module in here that adds an additional 5 HP to the room for a total of about 7 HP health, um, at least when it first comes under fire. I have my third capacitor sandwiched between these two rooms here with contact to two armor blocks. And I also have my anti, my Avenger defense system is what they're calling it. <laughs> my second air defense, which has a higher um, attack or higher damage, um, which I used to run the second anti-air room here. But with this new one, um, I have one of each and I find that it works for me. Four armor blocks, just the same. Continuing down, I have my, my final droid, my second to final droid room here with only two armor blocks being able to be in contact with that. Unfortunately, again, ideally we want four. My reactor room here, one, two, and three. My other droid room, one and two. And my other reactor room, one, two, and three. Now that kind of sums up and again, bedrooms, resource rooms, none of these need armor because they don't have HP and they don't get um, hit with lasers. A person can manually aim down one of these rooms, but it comes with a sort of built-in defense and um, it's not really something you'll commonly see. So as for the um, telespam tactic, um, I'm trying to figure out here if I should go ahead and show you guys the setup of how I plug my crew into this or save it for another video. But just for the interest of the video here, I'm gonna go ahead and just drop my crew back into the spaces that they typically were before um, I went ahead and pulled them out for this and show you guys uh, what it looks like uh, with my crew in the position that they need to be in. 
So I have uh, my standard Ardent crew, who, we, who are my boarders. I have some King Dongs with some high HP. Got some Galactic Sprites, not the ideal boarders, uh, if I say so myself, but I've got them in there just because. And standard rushers here. I'm a bit, I'm a bit old school. You'll see more people running the Universe Will characters, and um, the Bright Void, etc and these crew types but for me um i keep it a little classic and also it would take a lot of work to train up all of those crew all over again just to overhaul my telespam tactic so let me continue here got my daft kittis and my king ellie here fourth cyber duck got my galactic alchemist i'll put that bad girl in there uh, sometimes I like to put a nice little Dolores on. Oh, already 25. Oh, I forgot I have my captain on. Bye-bye, captain. And that said, guys, um, I'm missing something here. Ah, this guy with the energy shield. He should be up here. There we go. So here we have my um, telespam set up, guys, uh, with the Dolores crew anywhere uh, over here, really. So for most of us that aren't familiar with that, we have our rush crew here on the right, we have our boarders here on the left, and what happens is they go pew pew pew, and you can see that here in a replay from one of the tournament battles I did really quickly, just for you guys. Here we have, um, hmm, name, and just a quick pause here, so you can see he's got a gunship set up here, and if I tab to my ship, you can see all my borders are gonna, all my borders and rushers are gonna go ahead, and everyone's just gonna take their time heading over to his ship. And as I tab over, you can see that my borders are now over here wreaking havoc, doing a whole lot of stuff that they ain't supposed to be doing, causing a lot of problems on my uh, man's ship here. And if I can fast forward this just a little, in the interest of time, you can just see them do a whole lot. And this is um. What a high level end game pvp match looks like between a, a gunship player and a telespam player here you can see things um played out pretty pretty smoothly and um all of the crew come up here at the end all right so this has been my um 2021 guide on uh armor layouts and how the armoring should look speed up the room by yes please so here we have the wrong Android skin. Um, it should look a lot like something different, but uh, Savvy's gonna be working on that. Unfortunately for the video, uh, we didn't get the proper skin, but that's fine. So this is what the tournament skin um, kinda looks like. This is the runner-up prize, and the prize for the Hydra team is gonna look a, li a bit more um, Hydra-themed. That said, thank you all for tuning in. Stay safe out there. Uh, drink plenty of water. Wear your seatbelt. And I will see you all in the next video. Take it easy, guys. I'll catch you later.